I'm Anthony Valeri, Director of Investment Management and Wealth and Fiduciary Services. Thank you for joining. In today's market moment, we'll take a longer term view on investing and the stock market. It's been almost two years since the S&P 500 made a new all time high. That's the longest stretch since the great financial crisis. Today, we'll take a closer look at what that means for an investor and how to put it into perspective. Here is a look at S&P 500 rolling two year returns. Uh, although the index, the S&P 500, is up double digits year to date through the end of October, it has been driven by a small number of stocks and masks a weaker market under the hood. Two-year trailing performance is only barely positive at 1%, and that still reflects the damage from 2022, which was the seventh worst calendar year performance for the U.S. equity market. But you'll also see on this chart that as weak as two-year performance has been, this is not uncommon. And although it's well below the historical average, there have been prior periods where rolling two-year performance of the stock market has been weak and barely positive. It's normal to suffer through these periods of weaker performance. What's made stock market performance even more challenging is that other segments of the global equity markets or the U.S. equity markets have lagged and despite a rebound in the last 12 months they remain negative over the last two years here you're looking at developed international emerging markets u.s small caps and u.s mid caps all notably behind the s p 500 which again remains driven by a small number of stocks there is no sugarcoating the fact that this has been a difficult period for investors with diversified portfolios to make matters worse, a historically bad bond bear market is underway, and that has led to weaker performance for diversified portfolios that include bonds. Here's the trailing five-year return, taking a longer-term view, of a standard 60-40 stock bond portfolio. That return is below average at 6%, but as we just showed, a diversified equity portfolio has produced even weaker performance. And the more bonds you own, the weaker performance still. But here too, if like we showed with the stocks only slide, periods of below average performance are not uncommon. And we highlight four of those here, which includes a period in the early 2000s and in the early 2010, so not too long ago. So part of being an investor is, and not a trader is to grit it out during these periods of weaker performance. It highlights the benefit of having a longer term view and waiting for those better returns to pan out. Now let's get back to equities and take a look at your chances of success over various time periods. Here we show the trailing calendar year returns for U.S. stocks. 79% of the time it's positive since 1950 through the end of 2022, and that's a pretty good success rate. But again, here too, despite that good success rate, you will have periods of negative performance or periods where you just don't get a positive outcome. During the early 2000s, for example, it would have certainly paid to be diversified with international stocks, which outperformed their U.S. counterparts for seven consecutive years. Over the last 10 years, that's flipped, and U.S. stocks have outperformed international, although since the end of September 2022, international, developed international, has quietly outperformed their U.S. counterparts. So it's important to maintain that diversification and, and hold on to that over longer periods of time. Over 10 years, the positive outcome or the probability of success of a positive outcome improves even more. Stocks are up 87% of the time, but again, there are periods of weak performance. And then over a 20 year period, you can see that stocks are up 100% of the time, positive outcome 100% of the time. And the reminder how having an allocation to stocks for long-term goal is still a very effective vehicle. So it reflects the benefits of having a long-term view and your chances of success improve over time. And then finally, concluding with the fact that investments, whether it's stocks or even a diversified portfolio with stocks and bonds, is still the best way to grow your capital over time. You see here how various investments have beat both cash and inflation over the longer term and we realize this is a very long time frame, but it highlights the benefits of long-term investment stocks and bonds and that today's high cash rates are appealing, but they are not an effective long-term strategy to beat inflation and grow your capital. The strength of stock and bond markets here in November is the most recent example of why trying to time the stock market or the bond market or trying to time an investment plan is futile. So we encourage remaining 
invested, staying with the long term, and reaping those benefits over time. I'm Anthony Valeri. Thanks very much for joining. We look to speak to you again soon. Thank you.